Did you know that in Season 13, you can res with Newcastle silently? To do this, you need to drop Newcastle's knockdown shield, and while you won't get the full use of his passive ability, it will res your teammates in complete silence. You sneaky, sneaky boy. And did you know that on the roof of this building in Stormpoint, there's a great peak to help you get line of sight on this door, which can really help you flush out any team which is camped up inside. And yes, you can fit a caustic art in there. Be warned. <laughs> These are just a few of the tips and tricks I've got in store for today's video for players of all skill levels. Like seriously, wait for tip 6, it is totally worth it. One thing that players of all skill levels have always struggled with in Apex Legends is the recoil patterns, but what if I told you there is a way to make that recoil way more manageable for you? When you're tracking a target horizontally that's running across an open space, you may notice that it's easier to hit your shots, and that's because the vertical recoil is hugely reduced while shooting horizontally. You can apply Apply this information into your gunfights by strafing in one direction and countering that strafe with your aim in the other direction, which is going to create a smooth feeling aim and it's actually going to remove a lot of your recoil. This is a technique called recoil smoothing and I highly recommend going into the range and trying it out. Sia is an absolutely terrible legend. At least, that's what some of you think. But the truth is we're seeing a lot more Seers in high tier rank lobbies, and I'm going to explain why. So a lot of players don't see the value in Seer's tactical ability, which scans the enemies a little bit better and a little bit longer than Bloodhound scan, but it's a much smaller radius. But the real power from Seer's tac isn't the scan, it's actually the fact that his scan is almost like a mini silence. Seer's tactical will stop any enemies from healing, which is going to give you that little bit extra time to push them while they're weak, and it's also going to stop any abilities they're using. For example, you can stop a path finder from grappling or a Valk from flying just by hitting them with a Seer tag. So when you're playing Seer, make sure not to waste those tacticals. They can come in super useful in the middle of a fight. Now props to the gaming merchant for bringing this one to our attention, but he shows us that we can use Newcastle's ultimate walls and Rampart's tactical walls to create a really, really good head glitch on the top of Newcastle's ultimate wall. It's super hard to kill anyone in this position. And if you're not running with a Newcastle, then don't forget to just use Rampart's walls as a little extra bit of height to be able to create angles which you may not have been able to get beforehand. Now you may have noticed our new friend on the map Stormpoint and I like to call him Terry. Hey go Terry, put it reverse Terry, put it reverse. Oh, it's a little known fact of season 13, but if you land in this exact spot and look Terry in the eye, he has some really important information to tell you. I am 155 years old and I have witnessed many things. I am in immense pain and cannot move, but I see everything. Yes, including you, little Timmies, using Spitfires every game, you absolute weirdos. But nothing brings me more pain than you not being subscribed to the Simply Ashton YouTube channel. Please subscribe today and save me from the immense pain. So with the first split being Stormpoint, a lot of you are using Valkyrie for the first time, and that's going to result in a lot of new Valkyrie mains. A tip that I've covered before, but I still don't see used much in the game, is the fact that you can shoot Valkyrie's missiles backwards. And it's also really easy to do. All you have to do is look at the ground, hold your missiles, jump and shoot at the same time, and your missiles will go behind you. A great success! To be fair though, I probably don't see this used very much, because it's mostly useless most of the time, let's be honest. Another super the cool thing to do in Season 13 is to use the Spitfire. It's really good. I don't know if you've seen it or tried it yet. P probably not. Here. But yeah, this little known about and barely used gun is actually really strong. I highly recommend you try it out. Another simple mistake I see so many players making in every single game of Apex, be it players from the top tier down to like gold tier, it doesn't matter. So many players base their whole fights off of using shield batteries. Sometimes it's better to pop one or two cells and go back into the fight with your teammates rather than leave them to do it by themselves while you're popping a bat or a phoenix kit. Also, I don't know if I told you guys about the Spitfire, but that's a really important tip that you guys use the Spitfire. I think it's, it's really good this season. I, I don't know. It's just something telling me you should use it. We've all been in that situation in Apex when we're fighting a team, we're pinned down, and another team shoots us in the side. In this situation, it's super important that you and your teammates commit to shooting one team at once, maybe even pushing that team to get them out of the fight. While it's highly likely that you will get third partied after winning that fight, you will have the shield swaps from the team you just killed, so there's every single chance for you to heal up, turn around, and fight the other team. Now for this one, I've got to keep it real, Valk means this is not as cool as it looks in the trailer. Like, seriously, why do all Valk mains do this when they're 1 HP? Now in Season 13, while you're fighting in the range or while you're out in the jungles of Stormpoint, it's super important to keep an eye out for those sussy core sticks. I don't know what it is, but they're definitely up to something. What? Wait, wait, what? Oh no. 
Oh no, it's begun. The Corsic Takeover. Oh god. Some of you may remember that a few seasons ago they broke Loba, so her black market was no longer blocking doors. And I'm now pleased to say that that's been fixed, so while Loba is broken in many other ways, at least you can block doors. P pretty good, right? Right? But something that is unironically a really good tip to implement if you're a mouse and keyboard player is animation cancelling while reloading. The key to doing this right is to wait until that you see the weapon you're reloading is reloaded in the bottom right corner, but the animation is still playing, and then switch between your weapons twice so that you pull out your other gun and then quickly switch back, and that way you're gonna skip the rest of the animation, which can end up saving you valuable seconds. Now a tip I think even the most experienced players out there can apply to their game is holding their cover better. Now, Apex is a game which is played at a fast pace, and in the middle of those intense gunfights, it's easy to get carried away and wide peak too far. But as a general rule of thumb, the better players in the game will always be holding really good cover until the moment that they're either going to push you or fall back. The only real times that you should be full body peeking is if you've dealt a lot of damage and you're confident you can get the knock, or if you're going for a crazy wide angle. If you get caught out in the middle of the open by a team, then the most important thing that you do is go over and find the nearest piece of cover and fight from there. The last thing you want to do is try and ego challenge someone out in the middle of the open. It's not going to end well for you. Now on the very rare, very, very rare occasion that someone is using a Spitfire against you, th this never happens by the way, no, no one uses that gun, right? Then a 100% reliable tip to beat this person in a 1v1 is to use a bigger Spitfire. That's Sheila. This season, Rampart has been buffed a lot, and I highly recommend trying her out if you haven't already. She's actually holding her own right now, and she's really, really good, especially for those Spitfire 1v1s. When you have the bigger Spitfire, you're not going to lose that. Now, this is one for those new players to Apex Legends who are just getting on for the first, second, or third time, and they're trying out Bloodhound. Now, I just want to make a promise to you at this point. My promise to you is that Bloodhound ult does not make you Superman. These level 1 bloodhounds are always just popping out and running directly at the enemies. If, if this is you, stop that. This, this, is not, this is not good for you. This is not good for anyone. Now, I know it feels like you've popped some kind of performance enhancing drug and you're just on an absolute rampage, but I promise you, you will get put down very fast. It, it's, I've seen it happen too many times. In fact, you know what? I think you should comment in the comment section down below, hashtag stop it bloodhound. If you've seen this happen before, I think surely everyone has seen this, right? And you may remember in previous seasons where I've told you about animation canceling, mainly the Wraith phase animation cancel, but you could also do this with Valk's passive. This has now been patched, so I don't want you guys running around spamming on the ultimate button when you're trying to cancel. It's, it's not gonna work, guys. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry that this has happened. Please accept my most sincere apologies. I, Simply Ashton, am so, so sorry.